Let us get an overview of DDL statements which are typically used to create database objects such as tables. DDL stands for Data Definition Language. We execute DDL statements less frequently as part of application development process, especially web or mobile application development. In case of web or mobile application development process, we should not run DDL statements on live applications. It can have adverse impacts. Typically, we bring down the applications, run the DDL statements, bring up the applications, validate, and then we turn around our applications to the end users. When it comes to data engineering applications, we tend to use DDL statements more often. Still, they are not very common related to other type of statements which we execute to get the data from the tables or to update the data in the tables. When it comes to mobile or web application, typically DDL scripts are maintained separately than the code. We do not club the DDL statements along with our application code in case of web or mobile applications. Following are the common DDL tasks. We typically create tables, which are nothing but independent objects. We also create indexes for performance on top of tables. We also define constraints to existing tables to enforce some validation rules while getting data into the tables. This is how a typical create table statement look like. It starts with create table, table name, and then in brackets, you typically have the columns. Columns have the names followed by the data types and also optionally you can specify whether you want to have a constraint on a given column or even the default value. These are all optional but if you want you can specify those things. We can also add these things once the table is created. Here are some of the less common DDL tasks. Adding columns to existing tables, dropping columns from existing tables, changing data types of existing columns. These two are very rare, we don't typically drop the columns from the existing tables or change the data types of existing columns in the table. If at all we have to do that in a production uh, application, it will be a major change and things will be tested out thoroughly before making these kind of changes. We can also define comments both at column level as well as table level. However, in Postgres, we can only add comments after table is created. While table is being created as part of the create table command, we can't use comment we can only specify the comments once the table is created. Let's go through these uh, statements, understand some of the aspects which are covered here. I am loading the SQL magic and creating the database URL environment variable so that I can connect to databases using the Jupyter based environment. Now when I run this query, it will actually execute query by connecting to the database. The table users will be dropped if it exists. This will take care of creating the table for us with all the columns, user ID, first name, last name, email ID, so and so forth with the data type specified here. If you want to add comments at table level, you can say comment on table, table name, and then is, and then you can specify the comment in single quotes like this. Now you can run this, it will add a comment on the table. You can also run these commands to actually add comments to the columns. So in this case, we are trying to add comments for user ID, first name, and role. If you want to add comments for other columns, you can have commands like this and it will take care of adding comments for the other columns as well. Now, if you want to get the column level details, you can use a view called as columns in information schema. It will take care of displaying all the details related to columns in table users. You can see that we have 10 columns with the names user ID, first name, last name, so and so forth. Ordinal position is the position of the column in our table. If you want, you can actually use order by clause here to display results in exact same fashion for you and me. So after where I can actually say order by ordinal underscore position. Now you should be able to run this and you should be able to see the results sorted in ascending order by ordinal position. And you can actually go through all the details such as data type, length if the length is specified and other information whatever is available as part of this view. It also might have comments or it might not have. If it doesn't have comments, then there might be some other table which might be able to provide the details with respect to comments. However, the columns is not providing the details with respect to comments. So this is how you should be able to create the table, add the comments to the table. And also if you want to check the metadata with respect to the columns, this is how you should be able to run the query to get the column level details. If you want to get the table level details, you can actually use similar query on a table or view called as tables. So there is a view called as tables and you should be able to fetch the information from that. We just have to set tables here and then we can remove this order by and we should be able to see the results. So these are the details with respect to the table and these are the results with respect to the columns within the table.